So I'd like to elaborate on something I discussed in a previous video, um, and that it was the, the creation of vacancies. So I like to think of vacancies, these missing atoms, as uh, the result of a, a competition between the binding energy, the energy holding an atom in the lattice, and the thermal energy. And so we can express that with this exponential equation, um, e to the you know, minus activation energy over the product of K and T, the Boltzmann constant in temperature. Um, and, but, but I want to elaborate on that a little bit more and, and um, you know, dive into some questions that you might have had. So again, to summarize what we have here, what I said was, well, this is a vacancy here. Okay, this is a vacancy, right? And the population of vacancies or the number of vacancies, we often express it as a number of vacancies divided by the total number of, of sites. Okay, um, well, we can express that in the f this form, this classic form, E um, to the minus energy for formation of a vacancy over the product of the Boltzmann constant in temperature. Um, so you might wonder where that comes from. In fact, you may even wonder just intuitively, well, how can it be that an atom can jump out of its lattice site? And if it's you know, if the temperature was such that it jumped out of a lattice site, why would all the atoms not jump out of their, their lattice sites and you have a liquid? Um, it, it may be um, puzzling, perhaps. You know, why, why is it that just every once in a while, you know, atoms are jumping around, they're jostling around in there like this, right? Vibrating, you know, 10 to the 12 times per second or something like that in that order. And, and usually that jump, that vibration, that attempted jump, if you will, is unsuccessful, but every once in a while, an atom is successful. It has enough energy to jump out of its lattice site, and, and that, that might be puzzling. If if you are picturing atoms having a specific energy due to the temperature of the system, the temperature of the collection of atoms you're looking at, um, in reality, that's not the case, and that's what I want to explore here. So in reality, <coughs> Um, if we were to look at the number of atoms, okay, so we're going to look at the number of atoms versus the energy um, that the ener that that uh, that an atom might have going from low energy states to high. Okay, and I'm being purposely a little vague in exactly what energy means. But you could imagine it in, in the in terms of the vibration of these atoms in this lattice. <clears throat> well, see, the thing is, at a, um, at a temperature, say, like room temperature, well, you have a distribution of atoms. Not all the atoms have a particular low or medium, say we take a me medium kind of temperature. <clears throat> I'll just put it here qualitatively, medium temperature. Well, not all of the atoms have a low energy state, and not all of the atoms have a high. There's a distribution of them, with some at the high energy states, fewer, and more of them at the lower energy states. But what would happen if we changed the temperature of the system? Say we went to, um, well, let's go to a high energy, a high energy. Well, it turns out, at the higher energy, <coughs> you have fewer um, atoms at the, the lower energy, um, and more of them distributed across the higher. So this is a high temperature, and they're more distributed, I would say. Like we, we, could, we could describe it that way. Uh, more distributed across all the possible energy states, right? In fact, if you took the system at infinite temperature, they would be distributed evenly across all the energy states. At an infinite, if we take this to an extreme case, they'd be distributed across all the possible energy energy states. And that's interesting. You might think, oh, at infinite temperature, they would all occupy the high energy states, but that's not true. At infinite temperature, they would be evenly distributed across all of them. And so then we can now extend that out um, and think about, well, what about the low temperatures? Well, at the lower temperatures, at the lower temperatures, you have more of the uh, atoms at 
<clears throat> occupying the low energy states and fewer at the high. And in fact, similarly, if we were to go to absolute zero, zero Kelvin, right? absolute zero, as it's called, can't get any lower than that. Well, what that actually means, it's zero Kelvin. Oh, I'm going to write that in zero Kelvin. It looks like okay. Zero Kelvin. Um, only the lowest energy states would be occupied. Um, and you would, in fact, know exactly what energy state each of the atoms would have. So really, the temperature is an indication of how uh, the atoms are distributed across the uh, allowable energy states. And, and I guess there's two things to take away from this. Um, one, like I just mentioned, that the temperature indicates how the atoms are distributed, but also, perhaps more intuitively, that atoms in a collection of, ad of, of atoms, whether it's a solid or, or even a gas, the distribution's a little different, but in a solid, uh, they'll have a range of, of different um, energies available to them, or, or there will be different atoms with different energies. And so you can have some atoms that successfully they have enough energy to jump out of a lattice site, and some atoms that are not, perhaps most that are not, and it's in the solid state. Um, but if we elevate the temperature, we'll notice that there are more vacancies created. Um, and anyway, this distribution here that I've sketched for you is known as the Boltzmann distribution. Okay, now if you um, apply this to a gas, you might see a more uh, familiar distribution, which is the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution, but it derives from the same, um, the same concept. Okay, thank you very much.